just got out of the shower. We haven't really been doing much today. It's kind of a rainy, cloudy day, which makes you kind of sleepy. So we just been kind of hanging out today, enjoying some relaxation. Um, I'm gonna go take a nap for a little while, actually. <laughs> and I think maybe once I get back up, I'll have a cup of tea and I might um, do a draw my life. I saw a few of those online, which looked like fun to do. So I feel like drawing today, so I might do that. Okay, here's my draw my life. And I hope you guys like it. So I was born in St. Petersburg, Florida. And I was a happy little kid. I had a really good family. Um, and I had a really good childhood. My mom was beautiful, had beautiful long hair. Um, and my dad was a police officer. And he had worked as a police officer for about 30 years. My sister, her name was Bryn. She was about five years older than me. But uh, yeah, I, I, ha I always had freckles and a lot of friends of mine would kind of pick on my freckles so it kind of it hurt my confidence and I always like, you know, I want to have a boyfriend and they never really liked me back and so it kind of made me kind of sad growing up, you know, I always wanted a boyfriend and so I asked my mom, you know, like, why do boys never like me and my mom always had to say, you know, you'll find someone someday, when you're in love you'll know it. I also had really crooked teeth, I always had a gap in my teeth so I always wanted to fix that. But I had a really mean dentist who would yell at me and tell me to sit still and and, uh, and really scared me from from dentists. So I was always afraid of going and, and uh, so, so I just, I told my mom and actually the dentist got fired. And then uh, in preschool, I would always kind of sleep in and my mom would let me kind of sleep in and then, you know, she'd wake up, wake me up and say, okay, it's time to go to school. And so I'd go and, but the only thing was when I would go, I'd be wide awake and, and during the time I would go, all the little kids would be sleeping. So I would keep everyone awake. So the teacher would put me in time out. And the problem with that was time out was the bathroom and for a long time I would sit in the bathroom I remember and that was normal to me like I never thought about it but I became afraid of the sound of a toilet flushing and I never understood why and my mom you know she never understood why I was afraid of the toilet but now that I'm older I kind of understand you know thinking back on it of course, you know, I got older and, of course, wasn't afraid of the toilet anymore and um, became a happy teenager again and everything was good. I got into art and was just happy and going to school and my family was happy. Everybody was kind of doing their thing. My dad would work all the time. But then one day my mom told me that she had cancer and during that time if you had cancer um, you know there wasn't really any hope and and it was really sad and fortunately my mom passed away and I was 14 years old and yeah I know it's kind of going downhill from here but things do look up after but you know for a long time I was pretty sad about it obviously um, and so was my dad. My dad was broken hearted and, um, you know, seeing my dad sad was, was hard. Um, and it was, it was definitely a difficult time. My mom was definitely the glue. Um, so my dad ended up remarrying and I went through a lot of phases, like cutting my hair short and but it was only two months they had started dating and it really hurt to see that, you know, my dad was remarrying and my sister got mad and left the house and so then it just left me with not a lot. Um, I was just feeling sad and so they put me in a group home and, and 
then I also went into a foster home. But things started to get better, and I started to find positivity, and luckily, you know, taking myself out of the situation and taking me out of the situation, I graduated high school, and then it was time for college, but I didn't have any money for college, and I felt like that was wasting money, because I didn't really know what to be. I also learned that I was infertile. So then I got older and it was time for me to kind of figure out what to be or what I was going to do and what is life. I didn't understand like where I was going. and So I got a car and I learned how to surf and I would drive over to St. Augustine with my friend Monica and uh, we'd go surfing. It was really fun and I really loved the lifestyle and I kind of got into it. So I was really happy to finally be on my own and to be able to kind of live my own lifestyle and I really wanted to live near the ocean. So I went over to St. Augustine and I would surf every day and, and I didn't have anywhere to live so I'd just stay on the beach and if it rained I would sleep in my car. And it was really hard to find work and find roommates because I didn't really know anyone so I called myself home challenged because I was broke. But uh, one day I was walking around downtown and I met a gentleman named Dylan and he offered to help me out, he gave me a place to stay, and he found me work, he was so awesome. And uh, I learned that he lived on a sailboat, and I never heard of this. People live on their sailboats? What is this about? And uh, so I got really interested in it. He told me you can anchor your boat anywhere, and you can sail anywhere with the wind. And I kind of wondered, you know, is it expensive? But I really liked the fact that it was a part of nature, and. I loved nature and I was really excited about this new lifestyle and I wanted to live on a boat too so I looked around and I found a boat and it had sails and a clean title and a working engine and I was really excited to have my own boat but I didn't know how to work on it and I kind of learned, I started to learn as I went. I didn't know anything about tools or anything but I met people along the way that kind of showed me how to work on my boat and it was a really good community of people. And I learned how to sail my dinghy with an umbrella, and I got a cat named Doodles who lived on the boat with me also. And in St. Augustine, there's always live music, and I would always go and see Pete. Uh, he would play music, and I really love bluegrass, and there wasn't a lot of bluegrass in town, so it was always fun to go and watch Pete play bluegrass. And So there was a hurricane, and I asked him if he needed help because I learned that he lived on his sailboat as well, but it didn't have a mast at the time. So. For two days during this hurricane, I helped him on the boat uh, to ride it out. And during that time, uh, Pete offered to help me on my boat. And I was so happy to learn anything about boats, and so I learned a lot uh, from Pete, and we both worked together, and eventually we both moved on Norna, and we fixed it up, and uh, got it all working to cross the Atlantic, and we took Norna across the Atlantic on a two-year Atlantic circumnavigation. And I learned how to navigate, and we went to so many beautiful places, and I've learned so much about myself, about patience, about everything, but Pete was missing Ava during this time, and he wanted to see her, that was his, his daughter, and we became a family, and it was so awesome to have a family, and have a dog, and just be a part of something that I was finally home. Good morning, everyone. Uh, last night, I met some folks, the people who had interviewed me for a TV interview. And they've got one of those 360 degree cameras. And they showed me how it works. It's really cool. But they're expensive right now. But it's actually really cool because you take your video and then as you're videoing you can look all over the place you can like move the you, you look on your phone and you can move the phone all around and you can see in front of you or behind you or anywhere you want it's pretty wild <laughs> anyways having some tea I don't know what we're doing today what are we doing I guess we're gonna I'm gonna relax today today's I'll my relax day store. Pete wants to go to the grocery store thank you Pete and I'm gonna do some editing and um, I'm just going to relax today because I need it. Got another one saved. Another day edited and made. I got your daddy home. Aww. I got Layla a can of food. Oh, you're lucky. Yes. I mean, I sure like driving this bus. I'll tell you what. Me too.
too. It's getting easier and easier. It just gets better. Yeah. Can shift it even into first gear downshifting, which is like, wow. I think we're getting used to it too. There's the rain out there. You can see it kind of coming. Got the best doggy in the world. Best doggy in the world. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's do that first because I know we're gonna need some. Yeah. We got our groceries in. And I fill up the water. I'll spray this out for a second and then we can. I just found money in my pocket. That's a good sign. <laughs> Makes me wonder. I had money. I dried these pants. <laughs> Pete's cooking some, uh, Pete's cooking some fish. Fish. We didn't do anything today. Not a thing. That's okay. Pretty it is. Asparagus and rice and fish. Mm. Ah. The new tuner? Yeah. Yeah. That's a way better mandolin though. I'm just gonna put one string on at a time, so lose the position on this thing. Oh cool! That's all improvising thing. Yeah, I don't remember how it goes. I was like... You can make up. As long as you get back to there. Yeah. yeah. I keep doing that. <laughs> Thumbs up if y'all think that this song should go on Pete's album and Ava should play it. I don't know. <laughs> I'll back you up on guitar. You get a little comfortable, really more comfortable good, and we'll get the recording She says she's not good at it. I'll play uh, guitar and then we'll It smells like an old book. Like, you know, like when you go to read an old book, it smells so good, that smell. Yeah. You need one of those fast winders. This little wooden piece Pete made for the mandolin for the end cap so you don't, so you don't cut yourself because it's got that metal piece. So you just stick it right on the end. There, and but. 